There has been some confusion among the differences between SAP ECC and S4HANA. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the key differences between ECC and S4HANA from a technical finance and logistics modules perspective. This is going to be a detailed video and I'm going to cover all the important points. So please watch the full video to get the most out of the topic. If you are new here, my name is Arun and I talk about SAP. Please subscribe to the channel to keep up to date. Firstly, what is SAP ECC? ECC stands for ERP Central Component. It is SAP's main ERP application that was initially released in 2004. Since then, it has gone through a lot of version updates and the latest version of SAP ECC is called as EHP8 or Enhancement Pack 8. It contains a lot of core modules such as finance, consolidation, payroll, procurement, logistics, etc. And Gartner estimates around 35,000 customers globally uses SAP ECC as their main ERP system to run their day-to-day -day business operations. Now you might ask, if ECC is SAP's main ERP system, then what is S4HANA? Well, S4HANA is trying to dethrone ECC as SAP's main ERP product. It is the next generation ERP software that runs on an in-memory database called SAP HANA. It offers real-time analytics, advanced functionalities, simplifies data structure and provides improved user experience. I have made detailed videos about both ECC and S4HANA in my channel. I have provided the link to those videos in the description below. Now let's take a look at the key differences between ECC and S4HANA and why SAP customers are migrating from ECC to S4HANA. Okay, the first one is three key differences in technology and scope perspective. One of the key reasons for SAP customers considering to move to S4HANA is that ECC will go out of support in 2027. Which means post-2027, SAP customers won't receive support for new bugs from SAP for the ECC system. Whereas SAP has committed that S4HANA will be in support at least until 2040. There is a small nuance here that you need to make note of. S4HANA as a product will be supported until 2040 but the versions of S4HANA, which SAP calls them as releases, will be supported only for seven years starting from 2023. For example, the latest version or release of S4HANA is called S4HANA 2023, which will be supported until 2030. When S4HANA 2025 is released next year, it will be supported until 2032 and so on and so forth. Previously, these releases were supported for five years but recently SAP changed their strategy and now each releases are supported for seven years and a new release is released every two years instead of one new version per year uh, as it was done previously. The next main technical difference is that the ECC system can run on multiple different database types such as Oracle, MaxDB, DB2, SQL Server and Sybase. But as for HANA can run only on HANA database, which is SAP's in-memory database. So if currently a SAP customer is running their ECC system on Oracle or any other database apart from HANA, then they need to start using HANA database when they migrate from ECC to S4 HANA. Which means the customer must either hire new employees with HANA skills or they must upskill their current database team in the HANA database technology. SAP claims that S4 HANA running on a HANA database is much faster than ECC running on a non-HANA database. And there are several reasons to it. Firstly, SAP S4HANA reads data from the main memory instead of the hard disk. So there are fewer data movements. Next, the tables in S4HANA are column based instead of row based. So it only reads the relevant column in a query. It can also process different columns in parallel. There are no aggregates, indexes or history tables since application can access the original data itself. Lastly, S4HANA combines the online transactional processing, which is also known as OLTP, and online analytical processing, which is known as OLAP tables together. So you no longer need to reconcile them. The next difference comes in the presentation layer. Up until SAP ECC, customers were using SAP GUI as the tool to access the system. SAP GUI was released in the early 1990s, and there has always been complaints from the SAP customers that SAP GUI is not modern enough when it comes to user interfaces and lacks advanced features. The main presentation layer for S4HANA is SAP Fiori, which is a browser-based and developed using modern programming languages such as SAP UI5 and JavaScript. It is very user-friendly and includes advanced features such as embedded analytics and uh, real-time modern dashboards. Now let's take a look at the four key differences in the finance module. We are going to talk about universal journal, material ledger, account-based profitability analysis, and credit management. 
the first one and the most commonly talked about change in the finance world of Isfahana is the introduction of the universal journal. Isfahana consolidates various data modules into a unified table known as ACDOCA. This integration encompasses asset accounting, general ledger, material ledger, management accounting, finance, and profitability analysis. By incorporating all these modules into one table, which is ACDOCA, the system eliminates the need for numerous aggregates and index tables, leading to a significant reduction in data footprint. This streamlined approach enhances system efficiency. The next key difference in the finance module is activating the material ledger. While optional in ECC, the material ledger becomes a mandatory feature in Esfahana. Many companies choose not to activate material ledger in ECC due to challenges associated with numerous aggregate and index tables. However, in Esfahana, the material ledger seamlessly integrates into the ACD OCA table, eliminating past frustrations and making its activation a more straightforward process. The third one is account-based profitability analysis. In ECC, costing-based profitability analysis is the default option. But in S4HANA, the default option is account-based profitability analysis, though you can run both options together. Running an account-based profitability analysis has various advantages such as real-time reporting, simplified data structure, alignment with external reporting, and much easier period enclosing. The last one in the finance module is credit management. In ECC, the credit management modules was referred to as FI, AR, and CR. However, with s hana credit management is now integrated into financial supply chain management. The financial supply chain management module introduces automated workflows, eliminating the need for manual intervention in activities such as credit limit approval and risk scoring. Furthermore, the distributed architecture of financial supply chain management system enables seamless interfacing with external credit agencies and facilitate direct communication. Now let's take a look at the seven key differences in the logistics module. We are going to talk, talk about the interaction of business partners, material requirements planning, integrated business planning module, a material documentation table, advanced available to promise module, global trade services, and extended warehouse management. The first key difference in the logistics module is the introduction of business partners. Within SAP ECC, customers and vendors are distinct data entities. In s hana these entities are consolidated into a cohesive master data entity known as SAP business partners. The integration of customers and vendors into business partners brings forth various advantages such as a single business partner can fulfill multiple roles and processes multiple addresses. Second one is general data is shared across various roles leading to a reduction in the database size. And the third one is minimized redundancy as any unused data is removed after a specific time period. The second difference in the logistics module is planning the material requirements in real time. In ECC, conducting material requirements planning, which is also known as MRP, requires waiting until non-peak hours and executing a batch job. In contrast, s hana allows for real-time MRP execution. Additionally, subcontracting processes have been streamlined in s hana However, a limitation is that MRP can no longer be performed at the storage level as was possible in ECC, but in s hana it is limited to the plant and area levels. The next one is the SAP IBP or Integrated Business Planning Add-on. Previously, customers had to use a separate application called Advanced Planning and Optimization for logistics planning. But in s hana the key submodules of the Advanced Planning Optimizer such as Demand Planning and Supply Network Planning have been consolidated in a new module called SAP Integrated Business Planning. Production planning, detailed scheduling and parts of the other global available to promise module have been partially combined within the s hana digital core itself. As a result of these modifications, there is no automatic migration from APO to the new configurations. So while moving from APO to s hana all the settings and configurations must be re-implemented. The next change is the introduction of Matt's doc table in s hana In ECC, material documents were stored in tables such as MKPF and MSEG, whereas in s hana it is stored in the MATDOC or Matt doc table, which is also known as material documentation table. Eliminating the need for more than 26 tables that are currently present in the ECP, ECC system. The MATDOC table maintains the records for material movements, valuations, and other relevant information. It is part of the unified data model in s hana which aims to simplify data structures and improve system performance. The next one is the introduction of Advanced Available to Promise module. In ECC, you can check product availability, product allocation, 
and back orders with available to promise module, whereas the advanced available to promise functionality in S4 HANA represents an enhanced and more sophisticated version of the ATP functionality, such as using the unified data model, where the data is stored in a single table that is ACDOCA. This allows for real-time visibility into ATP information, and it also uses automation for functionalities such as releasing items for delivery, checking stock availability in alternative plans, performing MOS availability checks. The next one is the introduction of global trade services functionality in S4HANA. Within S4HANA, the global trade services module supersedes the foreign trade capabilities found in ECC. The global trade services employs automation to enhance the efficiency of tasks that were previously performed manually in ECC, such as embargo checks, license verifications, and the processing of import and export declarations. The last one in the logistics space is the introduction of extended warehouse management module in S4HANA. Warehouse management was a module in the ECC application. The warehouse management module in ECC focused on the effective management of warehouse processes, including the receipt, storage, and retrieval of goods within a warehouse. In S4HANA, there has been a shift towards the SAP Extended Warehouse Management Module, which provides advanced features and a more comprehensive solution for warehouse management such as slotting and rearrangement, labor management, advanced shipping and receiving, multi-level storage and advanced analytics and reporting. We have now come to the end of this video. I hope you received some valuable information. If you found this useful, please share the video with your friends who might also benefit. See you soon in another video.